Ford in 317 won't eat. 307 is empty, except for the half-hour Dr. Andrews and his student nurse used it last night. <laughs> Good news is you have a new nurse reporting today. Oh, fantastic. Bad news is she's a rookie. Oh, and look out for Mr. Freilich. He hasn't moved his bowels in four days. He's a little out of sorts. <laughs> And you've got to get Larry Haber out of here. He won't leave, and we need his bed. Great. We have one patient who won't leave and one who won't go. <laughs> That's it. Have a good one. Thank God it's you guys. I hate the night shift. They lie to me. They don't lie, Larry. I don't even think they're real nurses. <laughs> I think they're manicurists. <laughs> Tell me the truth, Sandy. How sick am I, really? I told you, Larry, you're fine. If I'm fine, then how come I'm here and not at the Kahala Hilton? <laughs> because you refuse to leave. How can I leave when I have a tumor the size of a cassava melon? You had a tumor. It was the size of a grape, and they removed it. If you don't shut up, I'll have them put it back. <laughs> yeah, but maybe they didn't get it all. They got it. It was benign, Larry. It's time to go home. We need the bed. Gina, thank you so much for the stuffed chilies you made. They were fabulous. A little spicy, but, but great. I'm glad you lied. Thank you. No, thank you. If Mr. Freilich doesn't go by this afternoon, have her give him one of those. <laughs> oh, um, doctor, if you have a minute, I, I think that I have this strep infection. In the Oh, the doctor, he's so cute. My mother said the way to a man's heart is his stomach. There's a faster way. <laughs> what? Come on. No, what? Gina, I can't believe you. Sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's for after. <laughs> after what? The stuffed chilies? <laughs> after you marry. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that you never... No. You're kidding. No. Do you know what you're missing? No. <laughs> My God. It's just that I believe that if you wait until after you marry, it makes it more special. And then the marriage is more special, and then it works out better. I prefer to wait. In my country, many, many women wait. Well, that's nice. It's hard to believe, but not. In this day and age, there's a whole country full of people that don't... Wait a minute. Do the men wait, too? Oh, no, the men, they can do these things. <laughs> With who? With ladies who have a job doing this. An American tourist. <laughs> Do you at least go out? Of course. Where? With who? Well, last night I went alone to this club and they wouldn't let me in. They let you in by how you look like and how you dress like. And my dress, it wasn't in the most latest fashion. They only want the people the most beautiful dress, the most gorgeous style. Back home you go to a club to dance, all you need is feet. <laughs> Sometimes not even feet. We have a lot of lepers in my country. <laughs> Yes, Mrs. Wilson. I think my catheter is backing up. Oh, I'd be right there. I can't believe my life. Look at this. This is the good morning I get. The bum hit me in the eye. He's no damn good. Leave him. I can't. He's three years old. <laughs> oh, doctor, um, can I ask you a question? I think I'm developing the staph infection. 5.30 in the morning. Good morning, Mommy, and I get a Tonka truck in the eye. <laughs> Who increased Mr. Cervantes' medication? You did. Oh. <laughs> he must know I'm a nurse. I dress like a nurse. He sees the uniform. I act like a nurse. Where does he think I go every day? Who? My husband. <laughs> Not true. He's a fireman, and sometimes they have to do dangerous things. But come on, let's face it. How many fires are there in the Everglades? <laughs> They spend most of their time playing cards and polishing that big red truck. And then when we both get home, I'm the one that gets to cook dinner for five of us. After that, I clean up, wrestle three kids to bed, and what's he doing? This whole time, he's laying there with the TV remote, just a clicking away, just a change in channels. Hard work, I know, especially since we got about 93 channels now. 
Then I collapse into bed. He starts chewing on my ear. Well, they think it gets as hot. It gets my hair wet. <laughs> and then they blow into it. It's kind of a saliva shampoo and blow dry. <laughs> And you start squirming all over the place because it feels so disgusting, and they think you're squirming around because you're so excited. And then he has the nerve to ask why our marriage isn't sexy anymore. Why isn't it exciting? Huh? Maybe if he tried doing it while I was awake, it would be a little more exciting. Three West, speaking. Hi. Uh, today at one? Well, what's your extension? Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you. Bye. Who the hell does he think he is inviting me to lunch? Who? <laughs> oh, Harold, my ex-husband. I put the man through medical school, through his residency. The day he opened his practice, he dumped me. Well, actually, he had his answering service dumped me. He was busy buying a BMW. So what time are you going? Are you kidding after what he did to me? <laughs> oh, look at this bloat. Why can't our uniforms be black? Why do nurses have to look twice the size of normal people? <laughs> yes, Mr. Lang? I need my pain pills. You got your pain pills? They didn't work. I think they were stale. We'll be in soon, Mr. Lang. Mr. Lang got his meds, right? Of course. He just wants extra so he can sell them to his brothers. I take care of well, I told Harold I'd call him back. I guess that better. Well, here's the good news. Mr. Freilich finally had a bowel movement. He didn't flush, did he? We have to look. No, he didn't flush. Good. He's still sleeping in it. <laughs> He's not my patient, ladies. Ooh. I'm so sorry I'm late. My first day is such a bad impression. It's okay. I'm Annie. This is Sandy. This is Gray. Hi, hi. Julie. The elevators had too many people in them. I usually take the stairs. I'm a little phobic about elevators, what with the cable snapping and all. <laughs> anyway, I had to wait for an empty elevator. An empty elevator? I can't ride with a lot of people in a closed space. I need arm's length distance around me in all directions. <laughs> Just a little phobia of mine. So, tell me, what can I do? I'm dying to get started. Helping is what I live for. Well, where were you before this? In the elevator. <laughs> no, working. Oh, I was a psychiatric social worker. <laughs> but I got too nervous around the patients. They had so many mental problems. <laughs> Which, of course, I would have been psychiatric cases. <laughs> Point me in the right direction. Why don't you try room 311 and see what Mr. Freilich's doing? Great. Annie, hey, would you get the butler file for me, please? Greg, you got a minute? Yeah, sure. Come on over here. <laughs> There's something wrong with your leg, Greg? No, but thanks for asking. Greg, look, uh, you know how we feel about you here. You're one of the best nurses we have. Right? It, it's just that if you keep flipping out and scaring the doctors, no one's gonna... What are you about flipping out? I saw you yesterday with Dr. Pelson. You had him kind of pinned up against the wall. I was standing very close. I wanted to see who was taller. <laughs> you were threatening him. Look, he scared a patient, so I scared him. Greg, you were foaming at the mouth. <laughs> no, it wasn't real foam. See, I do this little thing with spit. So I'll show you how to do it, Jim. You know, it's all right. I got, I got the picture. Look, I just hate it when these guys are so insensitive, okay? So sometimes I pretend to get a little nutty, and, you know, sometimes the pretending gets kind of real. Like in Vietnam. You were in Nam. You know what I'm talking about. This has nothing to do with Vietnam. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it probably has something to do with the guys in the white coats that drop in once in a while and make the sick people feel even worse. So that's why you told Dr. Pelson you were going to tear his leg out of his socket and beat him over the head with it? I told him I'd rip his arm out of his socket and club him over the head with it. I don't know what it is you guys have against accuracy, man. Just... Greg, Greg, you can't do that to the chief of cardiology and expect to keep your job. <laughs> I, I could never do that. You know how strong you'd actually have to be to rip a guy's arm out of his socket? <laughs> uh, look, uh, Greg, I handled Pelson. He's willing to forget the whole thing, but you can't do this anymore. No more scaring anybody. Agreed? Yeah, okay, agreed. Okay. I'll see you later. Thanks, Doc. Now, don't mention it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Farlick is all set. Baby.
trees, clean linens, and having his breakfast. What a nice man. What does he have? Oh, my God, I could catch this. <laughs> Julie, it's not contagious. It's hereditary. <sighs> of course. Julie, are you a hypochondriac? Uh, I don't like to call it that. <laughs> I'm just ever so slightly phobic about germs. And you decided to be a nurse. I love to help people. And this is a way to do that, plus maybe get over my little germ phobia. I see. Well, um, why don't you see if you can get Mr. Ford in 317 to eat his breakfast? He's been refusing food. Oh, sure. I'm good at that. Getting people to eat. It's an odd talent, I know, but it's my forte. <laughs> Her forte? Getting people to eat is what she considers her major strength. Can you believe it? Well, we could send her down to eating disorders, give those anorexics a run for their money. Where do they get these nurses from? Where are the good ones? The good, smart ones like us? Yeah. They're too smart to be nurses. Oh, Harold. Hi. Hi. Look, I can meet you at one, well, so... Well, we don't have to meet. There was just something I wanted to tell you. Oh. And I can tell you right here. Not a big deal. Okay. I'm getting married. <laughs> really? Yes. Do I know her? No. Who is she? Just someone. Well, obviously it's someone. If it wasn't someone, you could go on a honeymoon half price, which I'm surprised you didn't think of. Okay, you're getting hostile. I'm not hostile. <laughs> Who is she? A patient. She was a patient of mine. Know his job? Implants. That's nice. You get to design your wife. Sandy, uh, let's go, huh? How old is she? Young. How young? Young. Young like 30? 23. 23. Oh, that is nice. This way you get a wife and a child all at the same time. Skinny? What? Is she skinny? I'm just trying to get a mental picture here. She's a model. I got the picture. You know, if I don't get this patient to surgery, she ain't gonna make it. Don't worry. I'll last longer than his marriage. <laughs> so, when's the big day? Sometime next month. Honeymoon? The Riviera. Captain Teeth. Fantastic. Well, I gotta go. I've got an old bag down in pre-op waiting for a facelift. I'll see you. Sandy. Listen. Anytime you want a liposuction, babe, it's on me. And here we have Mr. Haver. How are you feeling? I don't know. I've never died before. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Haber, you are not dying. How do you know? Don't go by how I look. <laughs> we read your chart. Huh. Well, what about the whispering? The doctors are as loud as hell in the hall. As soon as they see me, they whisper. Doctors always do that. They like to have this air of mystery so the patients think they're God. I never let them scare me like that. Yeah, but you're not dying. <laughs> Mr. Haber, we are all dying. <laughs> I could be having dinner tonight at Trader Vic's and be decapitated by a ceiling fan. I hate those fans. I, I took a girl to the Caribbean last winter. There was a fan over the bed. I had to sleep in the bathroom. Well, you see, you and I are probably more sensitive than most people. And so we're more afraid. You know, uh, someday I am going to die. And when I think of that, I could scream and vomit at the same time. Which I've done, by the way. I mean, death could happen any time. Do you know this? Know it? I don't sleep nights knowing it. I'd like to know who made a world where you can worry is my deodorant working right before three junkies slit your throat. 
You know this. You know something? You're not sick. I can sense it. I'm very good at those things. Yeah? Yes, I can't tell you the number of times that I have sensed disease. And you don't sense it here? N not at all. Huh. So, would you like me to come back later and we can talk some more? Sure. You know, you could be saying this just to trick me. Oh, please. You think I would possibly try to trick someone as paranoid as you? <laughs> when someone as paranoid as me thinks that you're probably a plant for the hospital to trick me on my new job to see if I lie or tell the truth. You think I'd lie to a plant? How crazy do you think I am? You know, you're right. I feel much better now. Come back later. Almost lunchtime. I'm not going. Why? You're just not going. What happened? Bumped into him on the elevator. He's getting married. No. Yeah. Who? Her husband. Are you Mormons? <laughs> They're divorced. I thought I was over him. You were. You are. I'm not. Oh, Sandy, you didn't really want him. You just wanted the satisfaction. I wish that were true, but it's not. I want him. I was with him when we had nothing. I went through the worst times with that man, and now he's going to France on his honeymoon. Well, I want to go to France, damn it. I want to go to the French Riviera. I do, too. <laughs> They're in Hawaii. But I'm afraid to fly over large bodies of water. And that's why he wanted to have lunch with you, to tell you that he was getting married. To a 23-year-old skinny model, and they're going to France on their honeymoon with her implants. Mm. She's going to be going on my French trip, eating my French food, drinking my French wine, and buying my French clothes. But she's going to be buying them in a size four. It's a custom here, I think. Always go to eat to tell bad news. Always I see this. Oh, sit down. Have a drink. What do you want? The chopped salad? Okay. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. Eat it fast because I'm having an affair with someone else and she's waiting in the car. <laughs> it's a nice custom, I think, to give a meal. <laughs> well, it's better than in my country when they go to the barn and take the goats and pigs and disappear in the middle of the night. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Is it something we said? Something she said. She told me, to overcome your fears, you must face them head on like a matador and a bull. <laughs> She's the only one around here who made any sense. You could learn a lot from her. Ready, matador? Ready. Bye, Larry. Bye, Larry. Thank you. Dr. Callahan. Uncle? Call 125 with Dr. Callahan. I can only take you as far as the elevator. Rule? Fear. What? Germs. Where? The elevator. <laughs> but you said be a matador. Yes. Not the elevator. Are you kidding? <laughs> You'll be fine. Just take a deep breath. It's only three floors. With a long stop on two infectious diseases. <laughs> Big breath now. I love nursing. He's a big jerk, and I know it, and I don't want him back, but I'm so angry because there's something about the marriage vows that makes you believe this is it. It'll be forever, and there'll be a house and children, and everything will be perfect. Only it wasn't. But now it will be for him. He'll have it all. His whole life settled. House, wife, big breasts, kids. <laughs> and what have I got? a two-room apartment that had an ocean view before they built that high-rise in front of it. But I still have to pay for the ocean view because if you lean way, way out the window, you can still see a half an inch of water. I have that, and as my mother would say, my health. I don't even have a nice personality because I'm so angry, and that makes me angry. Well, think of it this way. 
They'll get married, have a big house, lots of kids. She'll be tired. Her breasts will fall. He'll replace her with a newer model. She'll take him for everything he's worth. He'll wind up in an apartment like yours, angry as hell, because not only does he have a life like yours, but he's paying a whole lot more for it. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Are you all right? Much better. Because, you know, my forte is helping people who are upset. Wait a minute. I thought your forte was getting people to eat. Well, they're basically the same. When you're upset, what do you do? You eat. Of course, when you eat because you're upset, you generally overeat. That makes you even more upset. But there comes a point when you are so upset about your weight, you completely lose your appetite, then you're thin. And by then, so much time has gone by, you've completely forgotten whatever upset you to begin with. <laughs> Looks like a charm. <laughs> Gina, do you want to come eat with us? Do I have to dress gorgeous and look fantastic? Because two nights in no, a row... No, no, no. <laughs> Honey, we're going to go eat. You want to come with us? Dang. I wish I could, but... I gotta have sex with my husband. <laughs>